After having viewed previous videos in these series, it should be abundantly clear how important the Arabs were even before the arrival of Islam. Muslims, of course, often argue otherwise. For example, a prominent figure called Sayyid Qutb is quoted in an article as saying, The Arabs did not have any role to play on the face of the earth. They did not have an identity of their own before Islam. Then he says, under Islam, the Arabs had, for the first time in history, an international role to play. They also had a powerful state to be taken into consideration by the world powers, going on to say Arabs are nothing without Islam. First, the term Arabs needs to be defined. Arabs have a very long history, going back thousands of years, that their actual origins is not known. In the book Imagining the Arabs, published in 2016, by Edinburgh University Press. Dr. Peter Webb, in his introduction, says, The date when Arabs emerged as a distinct group of people is also currently disputed. Some even venture that no Arab communities existed before Islam. The beginnings of Arab history have become uncertain, and there are yet deeper misunderstandings still awaiting evaluation. Although their exact origin is unknown, they certainly have existed before Islam, as they are mentioned in the Bible. In Hebrew, the words Arab and Arara literally means desert. In the Bible, the latter feminine form is used for a region associated with desert people called Araba, found in Deuteronomy 3.17. The former masculine form is used in Isaiah 21.13, translated as Arabia. More information of Arabs mentioned in the Bible will be discussed later in this video. The Quran in 997 seems to agree, at least etymologically, that the word Arab means desert dwellers. It uses the plural noun Arab to refer to the Arab Bedouins who rejected Islam indicating that the term Arab may have had its origins to mean desert-dwelling Bedouin people. According to this source, the full link is below, the term Arabia comes from the old Persian Arabia that the ancient Persians called for a region to the southwest of Mesopotamia. Later, during the ancient Roman times, they called the Arabian Peninsula Arabia and classified it into three distinct areas. As this was before Islam, this area was inhabited by Christians, Jews, pagan Arabs and others at the time. More on the division of Arabia by the Romans and their interactions with Arabs will be mentioned in another video. The word Arab existed in the records of an empire that is much older than the Persian Empire called the Assyrian Empire. The first clear occurrence of the word Arab is found in these Assyrian records in the records of King Shalmaneser III who recorded the history of a battle at Karkar during the sixth year of his reign in 853 BC. At the end of the list of his adversaries, Shalmaneser mentioned Gundapu the Arabian and his 1,000 camels. These historical accounts are cited within Jewish sources, such as this article in the Haaretz. Later, in the records of the Assyrian kings from Tiglath Pileser III through to Ashurbanipal, Arabs appear as both foes and allies. Sargon II claimed to have resettled some Arab nomadic groups in Sumeria as part of the Assyrian deportation scheme. In the Bible, Arabs show up in lists of genealogies, for example, in the descendants of Joktan, in the descendants of Abraham through Keturah, and in the descendants of Ishmael. 
In Nehemiah 6, there is even a figure called Geshem the Arab, who is also mentioned in Aramaic inscriptions. Geshem's story places him to around the 5th century BC, as explained in this book called The Arabs in Antiquity. Arabs are not fringe characters in the Bible neither. Rather, some are well known. One such person is Ruth, who was of Moabite extraction as she hailed from today's Jordan region. There's a book dedicated to her found in the Old Testament. Not only was she the great-grandmother of King David, her story illustrates the patriarchal structure and the challenges for a woman, including being an outsider and the prejudices she faced. She is exalted in the Bible for her devotion, tolerance and outstanding character. Although the book was written between the 6th and 4th centuries BC, her story relates to around 1300 BC. Another character from around the 14th century BC is Moses' wife Zipporah, who was a Midianite, an area in the region of today's northwestern Saudi Arabia. She was the mother of Moses' two sons. Moses met Zipporah and married her after he was forced out of Egypt. In this Jewish source by Professor Jeffrey Self, in the summary section he says, Ruth and Moses' wife were Arabs, going on to say, Arabs often appear inside the biblical narrative and in very interesting and influential places. Also, the Herods were Arabs, as explained in this source. The link is below. In modern times, an Arab is defined as any Arabic-speaking person who speaks it as their first language and who hailed from certain geographical regions without any reference to any specific nationality, region or ethnicity. This definition is found in well-known dictionaries such as in the Cambridge Dictionary. Within Islamic sources, the language aspect is accepted as part of the definition of being an Arab, but it is much broader with no mention of region, religion or ethnicity as there are early traditions where Muhammad is quoted as having said, O people, the Lord is one Lord, and the Father is one Father, and Arabic does not belong to any one of you from mother, father, rather it is language. Whoever speaks Arabic is an Arab. Although today the word Arab conjures up images of Muslims, this had not always been the case, as before Islam, the two main religions of Arabia was Christianity and Judaism. Islamic traditions talk about Arab Jews and Arab Christians living in Arabia before Muhammad, who soon either expelled, unless they did forced labour, forcibly converted or were killed. Ever since the rise of Islam, Muslims have persecuted Jews and Christians from their land, so much so that in modern times it has become rare to find Jews and Christians in what was once their ancestral home in Arabia. After Islam, these communities had to flee to safe havens and those who stayed, at best they were second-class citizens called dhimmis, at worst persecuted or killed. For example, there were Arab Mizrahi Jews living in Arab countries right until 1948, after they were soon expelled to live in Israel. Although there is a huge focus towards Palestinian Muslim Arab refugees, there has never been any redress for the Arab Jew expulsions, as explained by this report submitted to the European Parliament and this research paper published by Cambridge University Press. Arab Christians still face similar persecution in Muslim-dominated Arab countries. Here is an article explaining their plight. Many have fled to the West for protection. Today, the Arab world constitutes many countries of the world, though predominantly Muslims because of past Islamic conquests and ongoing persecution, 
some of these countries also constitute minority Christian groups and other religions. The point is, Arabs are not racially homogenous. Their ethnicity can differ as can their religion. So in conclusion, Muslim scholarship emphasizes the importance of Islam to Arabs. However, historically, Arabs have had a vibrant and significant history going back over a thousand years before Islam. Pre-Islamic Arabs are found in the annals of ancient Assyrian and Persian history. Pre-Islamic Arabs are lauded as being successful and prosperous by ancient Romans. Pre-Islamic Arabs are referenced in the Bible and important figures are mentioned who are of Arab extraction. Today the term Arab is broadened to include a people from the Middle East and North Africa, predominantly Muslims who speak Arabic. Historically, Arabs were more religiously diverse but less ethnically diverse as they are today. Some were Christians, others were Jews, others too were pagans and so on. From the 7th century AD, due to the Islamic conquests and ongoing persecution, the opposite is now true, with Arabs being less religiously diverse, but more ethnically diverse, primarily due to hundreds of years of invasions and the atrocious consequences of these events. Some of the gruesome accounts will go beyond the purview of this video. Some examples include slavery, forced conversions and intermarriage.